Welcome. I'm Pep Fernandez. Huge, huge show. Jeff, we're going to like go to every nook and cranny of the Inland Empire. We've got all the sports. We've got University of Redlands football. we got California Baptist volleyball. We have UC Riverside women's soccer. And of course, like we do our first segment, a lot of uh, high school football because this our theme this week, we always like to have a theme. Yes. First place is on the line, right? Hey, we're starting to really see separation. And then again, we're not seeing separation. We're seeing teams that could boss, possibly, we could have ties at the end of the year. But man, it's football right now is great because now we're starting to see these big teams are, are finally going to meet. I would love to see high school football take a page from like the Major League Baseball playoffs. If you're like tied at the end of the same record. Play an extra game. <laughs> have a tiebreaker game like a Monday afternoon, right? Just get together Monday afternoon, play one more, decide who's going to you know make it to the playoffs or win the league. But my question is, what if we had a situation like last year? We had the River Valley League five-way tie. Oh, yes. How would you do that? You just play a quarter? It's just round robin? Yeah, round robin. And yeah, basically, yeah, everyone plays a quarter. Everyone gets a shot at the other team yep. and figure it out that way. But there is first place on the line in several different leagues. Um, we want to touch on several of them. The first one we're going to start is the San Andreas League. San Gorgonio taking on Eisenhower. Here's the deal with this one, Jeff. Ike is undefeated. But Sanji's been the big dog in the SAL for a long time now. Yeah, Ike is 7-0. I'll tell you, they're not a throwing team. They're not a running team. They're kind of a combo team. They've got four running backs in the top 12 running backs in the entire conference. Uh, but Sanji, like I said, how many times have they been champs? Five years in a row. I, I believe it's 29 straight San Andreas League wins. So for the last half decade, it, it's been all Sanji. Yeah, it's been all Sanji, and, and they have, they have uh, a good passer, Jordan Pichot. He's got almost 2,000 yards on yeah, the year, and Elijah Hall has 970 yards. So they can throw the ball, they can run the ball, but Ike is 7-0. and oh. You know, Ike has a quality overtime win against Moreno Valley. That might be like their signature win so far this season. And for San Gorgonio, they've had a pretty tough schedule. They played some CBL schools, so they're kind of battle-tested. So Ike is undefeated. Sanji's 5-2, and two, but Sanji, again, has been the team to beat the last five years in the San Andreas League. And uh, we should mention it's, it's Eisenhower's first year in the SAL. Remember, they were in the CPL yeah. for so many yeah. years. And then they made the jump to the SAL. So they're kind of the, the new team on the block. But they're, they're almost outscoring their opponents by almost 200. It's 280 to 84 on the season. So we know they can score points. They can, they're getting 203 yards on the ground and 81 yards in the air. Well, when you're talking about outscoring the other team, because I know you love the, uh, the point differential you know, category. Yes, very much so. Uh, then the game we have to talk about next is Linfield Christian versus Aquinas in the Ambassador League. Now, Aquinas oh. is the defending champ, right? I mean, yes. so they won CIF. They're the defending league champions. Um, they had such a great team last year. Outside of that opening loss to St. Margaret's, they have been on an absolute roll. Aquinas is good. They're Division Five. They're really good. They're number two in Division Five, actually, in the, in the latest CIF Southern Section rankings. But with all that said... Linfield Christian is having a, a season for the ages. Now, you could make an argument like, well, have they beaten anyone you know, of substance yet, Jeff? We're going to find out this Friday when they take on Aquinas. Hey. And does it matter? We're talking point differential? Yeah, hit me. 332 to 6, my friend. <laughs> They've only given up... Six points all season long, and they've scored 332. We know they can score. We know they can play some defense, but they haven't faced Aquinas. I've seen Aquinas against uh, Notre Dame in the Holy War. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the best games we had all season long for Riverside TV. And I tell you, they, Aquinas is something that no other team that I saw in the Inland Empire do this year. They'll run a double wing. They'll run a spread. They'll run a, a wishbone. They'll go direct snap, a little wild cat action. I'll tell you, this is the game I would love to be at. There's a couple games this week that you're like, wow, on paper, this is going to be a fantastic matchup. This is one of them. Aquinas yeah. versus Linfield Christian is easily one of the biggest games of the week. And we'll see. I guess you'd say it's the Linfield Christian offense against the Aquinas defense. But Linfield Christian's only given up six points. So I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, know what to make but, of it. Hey, Linfield Christian is averaging 457 yards per game of offense. So it'll be a fun one to watch. This will be very telling. Linfield Christian's number one in Division 12. Yes. And Aquinas is number two in Division 5. So there's a, you know, a big jump in between the two schools for their playoff divisions. But we're going to find out a lot about Linfield Christian 
after they play Aquinas? Are, are they this good, um, or have they just not played anyone as good as Aquinas? I, Deshaun Burns does a fantastic job down there with the Lions. They might be having just a breakout season. Yeah, we're going to see if they're a paper tiger or real. All right. Uh, also, go ahead and roll that beautiful Heritage B-roll footage. Heritage has taken on Paloma Valley. A little video, video from their win against Cajon. Jeff, this is the Menifee Bowl. This is a huge, huge game. Now, I don't think it's going to decide the league title because the Rancho Verde is now in the Ivy League with these other schools. But any way you slice it, if you go down towards Menifee, this is the biggest game on the planet this week. Hey, they're selling game, they're selling game tickets online on the local uh, Facebook, Menifee 24-7. You can buy tickets online. I went to this game a couple years ago, and it was one of the most incredible atmospheres you can imagine. But Paloma, Paloma's got a, big, a couple big wins. They're 5-2, and two, but remember, they hammered a very good Notre Dame team, 48 to 21. Heritage, they've taken two losses. They're 5-2, and two, but they lost to Rev at 12. They lost 12-6, to six, and they lost to a very good Trinity League team, Orange Lutheran, 35-16. But remember, they have that signature win versus Cajon. This is going to be a great one, and every year these two teams get together, and it's always a good game. Paloma Valley used to be a throwing team. Now they're a running team. We're going to see what Paloma Valley is all about because if you look at the Division Three rankings, Paloma Valley is now in the top ten. After kind of a slow start, I mean, the Wildcats are there. We're talking about the Cajones of the world. Uh, we're talking about Citrus Hill. Santa. Tiago, Roosevelt, now Paloma Valley's in the top 10. This, this matchup is getting kind of its shine back a little bit because Paloma Valley's really, I think they've, I feel like they've turned a corner. And even when, you know, you, you'll say like, man, this Heritage team is really good and maybe Paloma Valley, uh, maybe they're not quite as good. It always seems to be a ball game. Like always. It always seems to be close. Yeah, I mean, they, they get up for it. You go, the atmosphere itself is palpable. You show up and the stadium is filled. You know, if it's a 7 o'clock game, it's filled at 5.30. You get the bands. You get DJs going on. Every, there's light shows in the, in the bleachers. It is an experience of anything I've ever seen here. The fee, as they call the it. Fee. You guys call it. You're part of the fee. I, I live in the fee. I'm part of the fee. There's two things that the fee is known for. The Menifee Bowl, and the other one is all the UFO sightings. Down, all right? over There's the lots. world. But, hey, I'll say this. Coach Broach is the key to any of these things because I think if we're talking about guys that have been successful, that's eight seasons in a row they've won the league title. This could be a ninth season. If it ain't Broach. If they can get past Paloma, again, it just makes that matchup with the Rancho Verde in the final week. Huge. In fact, that might be the biggest game in the IE come, yes. come week 10, depending on how these next couple weeks play out in some of these other leagues. Rancho Verde versus Heritage will be absolutely huge. And what's even better is they're both Division Two for playoffs. We get so, to see them again? Uh, I don't know. I, I've seen wackier things happen. Just watch the River Valley League. <laughs> but Rancho Verde against Heritage in week 10 and to see, see them play again a couple weeks later in the playoffs, that'd be like a dream come true. That'd be like an early Christmas gift for me over here uh, on the Inland Sports Show. Okay, now let's go to, you know, we saw Heritage versus Cajon highlights. Yes. Let's talk about Cajon for a second because on paper, Jeff, I, I see you got your notes. On paper, Cajon versus Citrus Valley is for first place. They're both 2-0 in the CBL. They're both 6-1 overall. But technically on paper, this is a first place battle. I, I don't know if Citrus Valley, now Kurt Bruick has done a fantastic job with the Blackhawks. I mean, to win six of their first seven games this season, they're going to make the playoffs. It's going to be, come down between Rev and Citrus Valley and Ukaipa for second place. I'm curious to see how close it is with Cajon because then we can kind of gauge how far the Blackhawks have come because when Cajon beat Redlands East Valley, that was a 10-point game in the end um, as Rich Lunsford and the Wildcats battled back. So I'm curious how this is going to play out with Citrus Valley and Cajon this week because I know Citrus Valley is good. We're going to find out how good. Hey, well, just put it this way. The last two games, Citrus Valley has won 80, outscored their opponents 80 to 13. Their only loss was to Colony. Yes. Cajon's only loss was to Heritage. So a lot is riding on the, on the line here. Coach Bruick, I mean, he's done a great job. He was at Rev for all those years. He's one of the best coaches ever. It's a family lineage. Uh, but anytime you have Jaden Daniels, and 
you just you can't count them out from any game. I don't care if you're playing Servite, Modern Day, Centennial. If you have Jaden Daniels, you have a chance to win. Hey, and speaking of Jaden Daniels, we kind of buried the lead here. Cajon quarterback Jaden Daniels is now the number one all-time passer in San Bernardino County history. He just passed Armando Herrera from Redlands East Valley, who had a decorated four-year career with the Wildcats. Jaden Daniels, also a four-year starter for the Cowboys. He is now number one all-time in San Bernardino County history. He still has three regular season games left. He's going to have what we suspect to be a long playoff run, so that number for career passing yards is only going to get bigger. And Jeff, He's second all-time in the Inland Empire, second only to Hank Bachmeyer at Murrieta Valley, who ironically, they're good friends. Yes, that's And they've right. gone head-to-head -head a couple times. In fact, Hank Bachmeyer, who's going to Boise, Boise yeah. next year, uh, said that he kind of has helped Jaden get his recruiting. He was on, our, on the radio show yeah. several months back, said he was helped with the recruiting uh, process. I'll tell you what, though. Hank Bachmeyer is third all-time in the southern section in passing. And Jaden Daniels is fourth. So they're climbing up the Southern section rankings. They're already one, two all time in the Inland Empire. Hank Bachmeyer and the Nighthawks are division one. That's yes. going to be tougher to get more games at the end of the season in the playoffs. But Cajon being division three, I mean, Jaden could technically have seven, eight, maybe nine more games. It's unbelievable to add to his record for career passing yards. He might blow past Hank at the, in the end just because he might have more games played. Well, let's look at it this way. He's played 10 regular season games all four years. He's been the starter for four straight years. He's also played playoff game after playoff game after playoff game. So his equivalency has been like five and a half years of high school football regular season when it's all said and done. It's a lot of football, a lot of football. So we'll keep tabs on Jaden Daniels and Hank Bachmeyer. But now let's go to Centennial versus Norco this Friday in the land of the Big Eight. Go ahead and roll that video of Norco against Santiago from last week. Jeff, here's the deal. So Centennial had a blowout win against the Sharks, okay? Now the Sharks come back the next week, as you're seeing right here against Norco, and Norco came away with a 33-22 win, a hard-fought battle against Santiago. So if you play the numbers games, does that mean Centennial's going to win by a couple touchdowns against Norco, or do you think it's going to be a competitive game? Well, I, I think it'll be competitive for a while. And I, and I mean this, if you equate this with basketball, baseball, and now we're talking football, if you have better athletes from top to bottom, and you have a couple skilled guys on that other team, you'll be able to run your offense. You'll do well for a quarter, a quarter and a half, maybe get to halftime. But I'll tell you, the train of Centennial – is so strong and so long that I think athlete for athlete, Centennial will walk away with a very, very sizable victory against a very good Norco team. Yeah, Norco is, I believe, number two right now in the CIF Southern Section Division Two rankings. So don't don't get us wrong. Norco is very, very good. They're going to make it 32 straight years, making it to the playoffs, which is a Inland Empire record. They're very good. I, I'm just curious. Again, like some of these other games we're talking about, like Citrus Valley against Cajon. I, I'm just curious to see how close this will be between Norco and Centennial. To, to get a better gauge of how good this Norco team is. Once they get to the playoffs, they'll be fine. I mean, you could probably pencil them in right now for the semifinals yes. at least, maybe even that CIF championship game. Um, but I'm curious to see what the, what the point differential might look like come Friday against, against Centennial. Yeah, and, and I will say this. I think Norco has great skilled guys. they got a very, very skilled quarterback, a guy we could possibly see playing some big-time college football in the next couple of years with Shane Illingsworth. He's, what is he, 6'5", 6'6"? Six, six, he's massive. 235 looks pounds. Looks like E-Man. Yeah, he, he's a beast. Uh, it'll be a fun game to watch, but I just see, I just think that that gap, even though it's closing slightly, it's still not enough to beat Centennial. All right, a couple other games to touch on real quick. Again, technically this is for first place on paper. Grand Terrace against Colton. That's a rivalry game. Both teams have won a couple games to start off Sunkiss League play, so on paper that is a rivalry game. Grand Terrace probably the favorite in this one as the defending league champion. So maybe Grand Terrace versus Kaiser could be the game in the Sunkiss League going forward. And uh, speaking of Kaiser, let's go to some highlights of Summit versus Kaiser because Jeff it's Kaiser running back Christian Hunter. 
he might be the top running back. Statistically speaking, he might be number one in the state of California. He's already towards the top in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. For Billy Cardosi, who's a friend of the show, man, just, just feed this guy the ball. He's actually not even getting that many carries. I think in his last game he only had, what, I think it was like 20 carries for 318 yards. Oh, only 318 well, I, yards. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, it's not like they're giving him the ball like 40 or 45 times. He's only touching the ball like 20 times, but he's popping off runs like for 15 yards, at least 15 yards, like every single run. That's how good he is. Well, he's averaging 13 and a half yards per carry. He's got... Over 1,600 yards, 24 touchdowns. Man, the guy is a beast. I've seen Grand Terrace play, and I've heard. I have not seen with my own eyes the Kaiser Cats, but from what I'm hearing from Billy Cardosi and friends, a lot of coaching friends, Kaiser is legit, and they are looking for that championship. They're looking for redemption versus uh, Grand Terrace from last year. Uh, Christian Hunter, 1,667 yards, 24 touchdowns on the season. So he is near the top in the state, um, again, in both categories. They're, they play Bloomington this Thursday. I think there's a chance, uh, depending how hard they go against the Bruins, there's a chance that by the end of the weekend, Christian Hunter could be number one in the state of California for rushing touchdowns and rushing yards. He could get 1,000 yards that night, Pep. We've seen guys get yards like that before. Remember, Malesio had a, a bazillion yards he in a did, game. Yeah. He had like 500 and something yards in that one game. Uh, and he, he had over – what was Malesio's final? He had one of the second best – was, he had over 3,500 yards. He did. He? I, I don't know if he hit 4,000, but he was way up. It was incredible. He had yeah. the second best uh, rushing year of all time. And now we're seeing the same thing. He's had two great running backs the last couple years, Billy Cardosi. Yeah, Tyler Algier was Holy, unbelievable last yeah. year. He was playing Division One football, and this guy's getting recruited by everybody. Well, why not? He should be, right? He's a stud. Yeah, He's he a, is stud. a stud. Let's wrap up this first segment with our Inland Sports Great Eight and four more high school football rankings. We need some of these teams to go head-to-head, -head, Jeff, as we take a look at the rankings, because we need to figure out what's going on here. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement, but I will say this. Vista Marietta continues to creep up. In fact, you could probably even make a case that the Broncos deserve to be higher than number seven. And they probably will be when it's all said and done. When, you know, Citrus Hill's going to play San Jacinto. Um, Heritage is going to play Rancho Verde. Norco's going to play Centennial. A lot of these schools will still go head to head. So I think in the end, yeah, Vista Marietta right now in the CIF rankings, they're in the top 10 in Division One. They probably deserve to be higher. They're going to play Murrieta Valley. That will be very telling uh, how high the Broncos should be. But other than that, not a whole lot of movement. The only thing, Jeff, that jumps out at me is I feel like we've got to make room for Roosevelt somewhere in the rankings. But the computer, this is what it squirted out this week. But we got to make room for Roosevelt. I don't know who we take out. Maybe if Santiago loses or a Yucaipa or, or maybe if San Jacinto loses to Citrus Hill. But we got to make room for Roosevelt. We got to make room for, for Roosevelt. But I will say this: if Linfield Christian goes out and beats Aquinas oh, this week, okay, you've got to put Linfield Christian somewhere okay. in that list. Jeff, you're right. Man, the computer is going to be busy. We we just pop in all these formulas and equations, and it spins. It basically takes all week long to come up with this very complicated system for these rankings. So. You're right. If Linfield Christian beats, you gotta maybe, put him in. And if and if Aquinas wins big, maybe Aquinas has a stake in, in the in the grade eight and four more. You have to. I mean, the Ambassador League from top to bottom, they're winning a lot of games, but they're playing. That's a smaller school division, but there's some good good football. There. Oh, it's so difficult. It's so hard. When we come back on the Inland Sports TV show, we're gonna talk UC Riverside basketball. Jeff went to a practice. I did. Hung out with Coach David Patrick. Also, the UCR women's soccer team is off to a historic start. They're off. They're thinking. Thinking in Big West title, they're thinking NCAA tournament. Um, so we're going to hear from the Highlanders as well on the soccer pitch. We'll be back. It's the Inland Sports TV show. Inland Sports. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tomesco Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. 
and boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want a, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. Talk a little college hoops here. Jeff, I can't believe we're all we're so close to the start of the season. UC Riverside tips off on November 6th on the road at Oregon State. Yeah. CBU will be on November 9th. I mean, we've got college basketball now right around the corner. It's it's hard going out of football and into basketball season when they cross over. Like it, it's oh. tough, but we got to start thinking about basketball. Well, remember last year? It seemed like was it past Christmas? For football? For football. Right up until Christmas. Right up yeah. until Christmas. And we were already uh, a month into the basketball season. But I'll tell you what, it's, it's coming. And we've got two Division One teams here in the IE. I had a chance to go down to UCR and, and watch a practice. A lot of good things going on over at UC Riverside. We got a little footage from practice as well. So let's go ahead and roll that. As we talk Highlander basketball. Jeff, first off, are those new practice unis? Like? They got brand new practice unis. They're wearing some nice three, what is it, the three stripe life. They got Adidas. That's right. Uh, but yeah, they, the closed practices, Coach uh, Patrick and his staff, uh, Justin Bell, the associate head coach, uh, Coach Magpio, they've got things going on, man. I'll tell you, there's some new, new faces, uh, a lot of new faces, I should say. And I'll tell you, they can shoot the ball this year. A lot of emphasis was put on shooting the basketball. I'd say at least an hour they were just putting up shots. And that was their problem last year is they couldn't shoot. This year I think it's a completely different offense, a completely different mindset, and I think the Highlanders are going to be pretty darn good in the Big West. You know, last year we saw so many, I'd call them slugfests in the Big West Conference. Not a lot of baskets falling. Um, 
defensive minded games where we'd have scores like in the low 60s that would win a, a basketball game in the Big West Conference. If they can add the element of from the outside and knock down some baskets, I think it's going to open some things up, right? I mean, they've got some good bigs as well, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. Let's just start with a couple of new guys. They've got a couple of Australians and a New Zealander, a seven foot one, Callum McRae. He's seven foot one, but he looks like he's about seven foot five. <laughs> he, I want to say, he's seven one. Maybe close to 300 pounds. He is a giant. And when I walked in, they said he has a chance. That's all they said. <laughs> he has. A and then they have a guy named Dragon Elkaz. Dragon. Dragon. That's his name. He's, he, that's his name. I'll tell you. He's a six-five shooting guard out of Australia, and they're expecting some very big things from him. He will be in the rotation. They have Jordan chess match already several moves ahead. But Jeff, if he, if Coach Patrick came to you right now and said, Jeff. You know, more you know more basketball than anyone else I know. I do. You are a basketball genius. I am. What would you do, Jeff, with my starting five? Who would be the starting five with the, with, for the Highlanders if Coach Patrick came up to you and said, Jeff, listen, I need you to you know, come up with my starting lineup? Which you won't, but if you okay. did. Small sample size I've yet. I've, I've won to two and a half hour practice. I didn't get a whole lot from what I saw. But if I, if I was to start right now, I'd say, Dikembe Martin, you're my starting point guard. Sure. And then I would go to my second best athlete, my best athlete, my second best player, DJ Sylvester at the two guard. Then I would go big. I think this is a big lineup. A Johnny Kennedy, AK. That's my guy. He's, he's put on some weight. He's a lefty. He can guard perimeter guys. We knew he was always around the basket. We saw it last year. Well, he, he played a little bit last year, and every time he played, oh, he, he was big fantastic. Games. He has great big games. So I would go with a Johnny at the three, and then I would go at the four man. Menno from he heaven, Dykstra. <laughs> the seven-footer can, can shoot the ball. He's a stretch four. The only thing I'm concerned about Menno Dykstra is can he rebound with the Big West? He likes to sit out. He's a perimeter guy. He's a prima donna. likes to shoot the ball. But I know Coach Patrick, and I've seen what he's doing in practice, and Menno Dykstra is going to be a different player this year. And then you got to go with the seven-foot-one monster, Callum McRae. So we'll see if he is the guy, but that's who I would start. If I go small, you've got a lot of other pieces. You can, you can take out one of the bigs, and you can go small lineup and play a lot of man-to-man. -man. You know, our dear, dear friend Trent Rush, the voice of the UC Irvine Anteaters, said yeah. that UCI has two starting fives. Not one lineup good enough to start. Yes. Two lineups good enough to start. So I replied to him. What did you say? I said, okay, whatever, Trent Rush. We have three. Bring it on. Three starting lineups at UC Riverside. <laughs> he gave me a hard time about it. But I'll tell you what, the Highlanders are going to compete. And those close games that we saw last year, I think are going to be winners this year for UC Riverside. Every single game was close for UCR. And, and more times than not, they came out on the losing end. Oh. Every single game was, was close. And, and, and they... Darn here beat teams that made the NCAA tournament. They were within one, two points, and they had a brutal schedule last year. They went and played everybody, basically everybody in the WAC conference on the road. Uh, they went up to Seattle University, which was one of the best teams I saw all year, Utah Valley. You saw them at Montana. And then they go to Michigan. They played Michigan and Cal last year where they got to win the first game of the year. So refresh my memory. So Cal State Fullerton won the Big West. Cal State Fullerton and won, went to the tournament. Went to the tournament. They have everybody back this year, by the way. They do. Everybody except one guy, and he was just a minor piece. But UCR beat them here in Riverside, and they yes, should have beat it. them at Fullerton, right? Lost in the last uh, last minute. That was Justin mm. Bell's first game oh, that's as right, head first coach. Conference game. But I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised when I walked into that gym and I saw the intensity, I saw the commitment, and I saw guys making shots. That was important to me. I said, they're buying into it. And they, and Coach Patrick, Coach Magpile, Coach Bell, those guys were not giving them an inch. It was an intense practice, and I'll tell you, it, it was a refreshing take on UCR basketball. You know what I liked about practice? The practice gear. The gear. You could tell. I, as soon as you great put the video up, like, yeah, that's new gear. Great All gear. Right, let's talk about UCR women's soccer as well. They're off to a great start. 10-1-2 and two overall. Um, they just dropped their first game all season long this past Sunday night against UC Santa Barbara. But the Highlanders are, yes, they are that good. They will be in the hunt for the Big West Conference Championship. They're thinking about NCAA tournament. In fact, we were at practice this morning. Go ahead and roll that video. They're hard at work. So, Jeff, they do the morning practice so the, the players can come out there, get 
getting a good workout. Then they, you know, go to their classes throughout the day. So they're putting in the work this morning, getting ready for a big Thursday night game against UC Irvine. And the Eaters have ran out to a 3-0 start in conference play. So I guess kind of like the River Valley League for high school football. All these games are like magnified. This is a huge game for UCR. But again, they're 10-1-2 they're to start the season. Their defense has been great. They've been, they've been scoring a lot of goals led by Matty Feist. Um, they're really good, but can they put it together? Can they wrap up this season on a strong note? And uh, who knows, maybe win a conference crown and get to the NCAA tournament. Here's Coach Gonzalez, as well as some of his top players. We're talking about goalkeeper Annie Bailey and also Matty Feist, so that we just mentioned. So uh, let's hear from Coach and the players at uh, UC Riverside this morning. Inland Sports. You know, you've got a senior leadership that understands how we've done it in the past and why we have been successful or maybe not have been. And going into spring, they were 100% bought in on we're going to be a different team this year. We're going to be more consistent. The mentality coming in is no longer the underdog, which, as you saw, we were not only be beating teams, but we we're keeping them out, out of our net as well. And that mentality, along with the leadership and confidence of what we do, uh, has been a I think for me, for me, been the catalyst to what we've been doing. There's definitely so much potential here, um, but we're just taking it one step at a time, staying focused on each game. Uh, like my dad says, after every game, we check a box, you know, move forward to the next one. Yeah, it's definitely built our confidence, and it's uh, it's been helpful, like moving forward. But um, we're always just focused on one game at a time. And on Thursday, we have good. Op we're facing good opposition, and you know, with every big conference team, we expect. Uh, you know, the high end intensity and a lot of competitive players out there. So um, it's been, it was encouraging going into conference play, but um, we're just going one game at a time. They're good. And they, got, they just got to finish strong. Like the start of the season's great. They've played some great teams along the road, uh, including uh, Denver, the University of Denver, which I know Coach Gonzalez said is a perennial strong team making the NCAA tournament. So they've played some good teams. Now they've got to show their wear here in the Big West Conference and and try to, you know, capitalize off the strong start and maybe get to the NCAA tournament. Well, there's a couple of things that the Big West is really good at. I mean, uh, good in basketball, but soccer, baseball, yes. those two, and, and softball, those are quality national programs in the Big West. If UCR could pull off an upset and win that conference, that would be huge. All right, when we come back, we're going back to high school football. You know what's funny? I saw a, a comment on YouTube, and it said, you guys talk about the River Valley too much. The whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, back up. Back up. <laughs> because the River Valley League is so out of control. How do you not talk about the River Valley League? It's entertaining. Why would you not? <laughs> I mean, when you have five teams that win a league championship and you have just battle after battle, upset after upset, you got to talk about it, for God's sakes. Oh, it's so wacky. We're going to talk River Valley League high school football plus the University of Redland football team picked up a huge win against defending conference champ uh, Chapman over the weekend and former Ukaipa High School quarterback Nathan Martinez inserted into the game in the second quarter and he went off. So we're going to hear from Nathan Martinez as well when we come back on the Inland Sports TV show. How you guys doing? Coach Bass here. We're back at the BPC. Wanted to share with you guys what we're doing today in the gym. Today is all about backward movement. So if you're a football player, lacrosse player, soccer, basketball, any sport that requires backward movement, this drill's for you. Come check it out. So what the athletes are doing here, they're doing a back lateral run. So what I'm looking for here is I want their head back. All right, they're gonna hit a lateral run. They're gonna hit a quick transition. So this is a 90 degree cut. So on all of our 90 degree cuts, it's a single foot cut. And what I'm looking for is just a nice and fluid lateral run with their head looking back. They're going to dip that inside shoulder, make a nice, crisp and clean cut. They want to stay on a tight rope, and they want to accelerate out of it. So this drill here, it's very similar to the last drill that we just watched. Now we're hitting our lateral run, and we're going at a 135 degree angle. So we're just we're taking it up a notch. We're increasing that angle. So now we're still getting that single foot cut, cut off the inside edge of our foot, and then we want to decelerate at the cone. So again, we want to make a nice and sharp transition. We want to dip that inside shoulder. We want to decelerate. 
So that's our Boost training tip of the day. Thanks for checking us out again. And make sure you stay up to date with everything that's Boost. Check our schedules, check our videos at our website at www.boosttrainingsystems.com. Check out our Twitter at Boost underscore training and our Instagram at Boost Training. Grind hard, stay solid. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. Right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. This is Centennial High School football coach Matt Logan. You're watching the Inland Sports Show. All right, welcome back to the Inland Sports TV show. We're talking River Valley High School football. It's, you know, there's some leagues, Jeff, I'll, I'll say this. There's some leagues out here in the Inland Empire for high school football. You just kind of know who's going to win, right? Yes. And it's not very dramatic at the end. It's not very suspenseful. We like the leagues where it's kind of up in the air. And the River Valley League kind of epitomizes that, right? You just oh, uh, don't know. Well, the last couple of years for sure. Before, though, remember, it was Ken, Ken Batnor's been at, the, at Norta Vista for a quarter century. That's a long time. He's won a lot of you, – you walk in the team locker room and there's championship, 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 championship. But – the last couple of years, like you said, it's like confetti. Just throw it up, and whatever, whoever wins, heck, it could be five. Hey, five teams win. This year, it's exactly the same. So maybe they'll maybe they'll build Batdorf a statue one day. No, no, <laughs> no, no statue. They'll just name the stadium after him someday. Well, speaking of the River Valley League, they had their sportsmanship symposium. A, a big thank you to John Tibbles and everyone part of the uh, the RVL for inviting me out to to speak wait, about wait, sportsmanship wait, wait. today. You Hold on, that? wait. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of kind of dark. That's blinding me. <laughs> <laughs> but I went up there, and I, my opening line, if you remember, was, hey, um, I've covered high school football up and down the state of California. The, the biggest, the best example of sportsmanship I've ever seen is the fact that the, the River Valley League <laughs> shared the league title five different ways. Five teams won the league title last year. How nice was that to that, share? That was wonderful. And the funny thing is I've been to all five of those schools since the end of last football season and in every gym it says River Valley League champ yeah. and five of them and then of course you have Harupa Valley which you can't feel bad about you know why? Second place. They got second place. <laughs> That's the highest they finished in a long time. So good for Harupa Valley and the five other teams. All right. Well, talking RVL, it'll it'll make your head spin. In fact, I just talked to Coach uh, Ken Mashinsky at Ramona High School, and there's all these different scenarios that you know if this team beats that team, then oh. there's a chance to be a four-way tie. Uh, it's it's hard to it's hard yeah. to make out. Like the Inland Sports supercomputer for our rankings. There's lots of equations and formulas and stuff going down. Let's toss it over to Cullen Holt. He's going to try to make a little bit of sense of what's going on right now in the River Valley League. Cullen? 
Well, without the help of a supercomputer, we are trying to make sense of this league. Craziness reigned last season, and it's back once again. A five-way tie in 2017 and 2018. The race is just as tight once again. So as we take a look at the standings, Hillcrest with a big win over Norda Vista to open up league play for them. And then they have a come-from-behind victory over the Rams from Ramona. That leaves them in control in first place, but a four-way tie for second that includes Ramona, Norda Vista, Patriot, and La Sierra. So once again, it's unclear who's going to come out on top. We caught up with Coach Brandon after that tough win, which it was 3-0 at halftime, guys. And then Hillcrest came back to win it. So John Brandon talking about his team's big win over the Rams as River Valley League play just starting to heat up. Inland Sports. Uh, you know, I, I think it was a defensive battle, obviously. I mean, they played some great defense. Um, I thought we both teams played great defense, and they almost got it, uh, the block at the end of the first half, and it snuck it in and it came out down the second, first half, and we lost the field battle the whole first half, and I thought, I thought we started to, uh, to win it back in the second half and uh, did some really great things on both sides of the ball. You know, we, we, we coming out at halftime, we made some adjustments, and, uh, you know, we decided, some of our main guys just got to win. You know, we came out here with talent, you know what I'm saying? We came out here with hard work. We've been through the adversary throughout all week of practice. We've been trying to get through. You know, our, our memo was all gas, no brakes. You know what I'm saying? So we just trying to keep the energy up. And we came, at halftime, we was down, you know what I'm saying? We was down. And we came, at, we came back second half, and we just came back and did our, did, did our thing. Offense started moving. Defense started doing our thing. We got interceptions, turnovers, and our energy was put up. So that just had the momentum switch to our side, and we made it happen. You know, I'm really glad. I'm, I love my teammates to death, man. They over here, they helped me. I helped them. We got to get through it, and we ended up coming up top this game, and I'm very thankful for that. Well, the Trojans will look to be all gas, no breaks, as they now control their own destiny. As far as playoffs are concerned, three teams will look to get in in the River Valley League as far as being guaranteed for a CIF spot. The Trojans will have Patriot this Friday, and then all eyes on that matchup at the end of the year. Last week of the season, it'll be Norda Vista and Ramona. Maybe second place, maybe first place. Who knows as we try to sort this out. We may have to turn to the supercomputer, Pep and Jeff. Back to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, that supercomputer is like hey. working overtime right now with the River Valley League. It hey. doesn't know what's going on. All I'm going to say is, did you guys see that interview of Coach Brandon? Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. No, I'm going to say this. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, yeah. so I can. I, I think I'm, I'm allowed to say this. Oh no! If you didn't know he was six foot five and probably 285, 295 pounds, okay, you would either say he's a leprechaun, no, no, or or a, a guy that lives underneath bridges that eats children. A troll. <laughs> a troll. A large troll. <laughs> John Brandom, that beard I don't know about. I've seen you without it. I, I Go without the beard. Go without it. He's a good-looking guy. He's hiding underneath the beard. Yeah, just go without the beard, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, so Hillcrest versus uh, Patriot this week. Yes, good one. Is huge. If Hillcrest wins out, there's no drama, right? They win the no. league. But if Patriot can sneak up on Hillcrest – here we go back to square one, right? And we're, we're back in the same boat of who's going to win the yeah. River Alley League. Th that's when John Brandon shaves his beard <laughs> and goes, hunkers down and gets ready to figure out how the heck, who wins? Uh, is it going to be a coin flip? Are we going to play a round robin? Are we going to go Mon row? Monday afternoon game. Rochambeau, right. little rock, paper, scissors. Uh, you got to decide it some way. But I'll tell you, the River Valley League, like I said, it's confetti, throw it up in the air, and just <laughs> guess who wins. That was our live radio game last week on the Inland Sports Channel. This week, let's punch it up right now, Arlington against Elsinore. That is Sunbelt League Action. Arlington still seeking their first win of the season, and I know Elsinore and Coach Peralta, they're thinking playoffs. They want to finish strong in Sunbelt League and get to the playoffs, Jeff. Roney Ball, and I'll tell you what, the coach over at Elsinore is one of the coolest men alive. Yes. I saw them last year covering a game for Riverside TV. Uh, after every game, the players thank the fans. They shake hands with everybody that comes down. Uh, I love Elsinore, and I like I kind of like Arlington. I'm a Ramona guy, but what a good game for you guys. And look at that play. look at that helmet real quick. See how it said E H S and yes. it had the it had the tiger underneath. Yes. Did anyone else? There it is. Did you guys notice that's like the LSU helmet? Has anyone else noticed that? I was. Barely awake. I was I was holding on to fighting off sleep uh, Saturday. And, and it was, hit you? And LSU was playing Florida, and I was laying back, and I thought, oh, my goodness. 
Elsinore is doing the LSU helmet because LSU has the same thing. It says LSU and it has the tiger. I, it just hit me. I've been, we've been covering Elsinore for years, and it finally just sunk in as I was fading off to sleep, taking a little nap. That's, that's the LSU helmet. It is. Yes, I what? Look, look, you Google it. I guarantee. It. <laughs> All right. Um, that's our radio game. That's Thursday night at Ramona High School, Arlington against Elsinore. Uh, we wrap things up with the University of Redlands football. They are now in the thick of it for that Skyac championship. And, Jeff, if, if the cards uh, kind of you know, play out in, in their favor, they will win the conference title. Big win for the Bulldogs against the defending conference champ, Chapman, over the weekend. And what's more uh, remarkable about this is that Nathan Martinez, the quarterback out of Ukaipa High School, was entered into the game in the second quarter, replacing Levi Plant, and he guided them to a big win. 39-26 was the final score. In fact, breaking news, Nathan Martinez is the conference offensive player of the week for what he did in that win against Chapman. Does this mean there's a quarterback controversy? See, I don't know. I was trying to get a straight story. Was the quarterback, Levi Plant, was he injured? Were they just trying to maybe mix things up? Because Nathan's kind of a different quarterback. You yeah. know? I mean, Levi Plant's a big, tall, lanky guy. Nathan's more small and compact. He's, he's very agile. You can, you'll see in the highlights here in a second uh, when we have an interview with him that he, you know, he always ran. He ran at Ukaipa High School. Yeah. He runs at the U of R. So now they've got, I guess, a good problem. If you're Coach Mike Maynard and the Bulldogs, you got two really good quarterbacks going forward. But now the Bulldogs are in the driver's seat to win the Skyac championship, which will get you to the playoffs in Division Three. So here's Nathan Martinez after that big win. Big game for him against Chapman. Inland Sports. I missed this game way too much. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great guys on the team, and knowing that I can count on every single one of them, it was just another great feeling. We'll never forget this. Well, obviously, you don't want to see Levi go down, but when you when you had the chance to get in there, were you thinking, man, i got to make the most of this right now? I mean, all I always know is whenever you get your shot, you can't miss. And I took it, and Levi was there supporting me the whole entire way. Big shout-out to him. I love the guy. So. Did it feel like normal just getting out there and engineering drives and getting the team downfield and in the end zone? It felt like something second nature. Like, I just, I've done it for so long and I lost, like, I didn't have the opportunity last year and just to have it back. I thought I got a little bit of me back from last year, so I just love it. And in this conference in the Sky Act, I mean, you can't really lose any games to win the conference title, so you guys had to have this one and you got it. That's yeah. the big picture, right? It's winning conference? Yeah, big picture is uh, winning conference. That's the first step. And then, uh, once we keep, hopefully we just keep knocking them all off and go to playoffs and see what happens there. We were trying to make a run, get two rings instead of one. I've always been a Nathan Martinez fan, so I'm glad. Like as he said, if you got, if you get your shot, don't miss, right? So I'm glad to see him out there. I'm glad to see the Bulldogs winning. This is a really good U of R team. I, I'm curious to see what they do, assuming they get to the playoffs, what they would do in the Division Three playoffs. And he said, play for not one but two rings. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, why not? If you're going to win conference, might as well win a national championship. So if you win four years in a row, you win both. You can win eight rings technically. Ah, That'd be awesome. You just walk around like this. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's Nathan Martinez. <laughs> All right, when we come back, California Baptist Volleyball. They're great. Yes, uh, they are. I saw them over the weekend. They beat uh, Cal State Bakersfield, who was the defending WAC champion. Huge win for them. Now they're looking ahead to a showdown with – UC Riverside. We'll oh. talk about the Highlanders versus the Lancers when we come back on the Inland Sports TV show. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Maynard, the head football coach at the University of Redlands, and you're watching the Inland Sports Show. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled Quick Quality Oil Change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Kin Sporting Goods, they have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Catalano Motors in Corona off of Tomesco Canyon Road. You're going to save thousands of dollars at Catalano Motors. And boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. on the customer here.
Right. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. any sales on them we do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service vacuum and cleaned your windshield for you as well everything's looking pretty good you come into us one time believe me we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time Welcome back to the Ellen Sports TV show. We're talking CBU volleyball. Jeff, I know your mom and dad are, are big fans of Lancer volleyball. They go to all the games unless they're on vacation. Right now they're on vacation, but they go to every Lancer volleyball game. My, my parents, they're, they're big fans. I picture them, I, I picture them with little, like, uh, little pom-poms waving, and, and every time somebody does, does something well, good job, good job, good job. Yes, Gorm family. They missed a great match as California Baptist beat the defending WAC champion Cal State Bakersfield on Saturday. That was a huge matchup for the Lancers, winning on their home floor in five sets. We got video highlights of that one. Let's roll that. As CBU really winning some big signature uh, matches, Jeff, early in this season. And I know, I know they're getting ready for that showdown. It's a Tuesday night special against UC Riverside inside the CBU Event Center as we go inside the Lancers, presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. Tessa Oaks was on fire, the pride of Woodcrest Christian High School, as they gutted it out against the Roadrunners in five sets. That's a huge win. If, if Bakersfield is the... I don't know, you'd call it the, the barometer, the, the measuring stick in the whack, then, then CBU just passed it. But they can't go to the postseason, but they can still finish in first place during the regular season in the whack. So wait, they, they're not allowed to go to postseason. Is it the same as in basketball? It's like a four-year window? Well, they, there's, yeah, there's a transition process so that they'll be eligible in a couple more seasons. So there's no, Is there any postseason tournaments? Like some of the others? Yeah. Is there one for volleyball? Cullen says there is. He's our CBU guy. He's our, yeah, our, our. But expert. one day, if they win the WAC, they will go to the NCAA tournament. That's awesome. The, that's the good news. And if you're beating the defending WAC champion, you're already at that level. You're already, you know, hanging with the big dogs in the WAC. We need to sign a petition to get the Lancers in the tournament. <laughs> Everyone will get America to sign it and get them in. Well, it was a huge win against Cal State Bakersfield for CBU. Now they're going to go up against UC Riverside. There's a couple of games in between, but we're looking ahead, to that, ahead. to that UCR matchup. Staff and their, their staff are great people, and we know some of their players, and they're, they're good kids. Um, but it's something that we're really looking forward to. I mean, anytime you uh, can get a chance to play the team that's 10 minutes down the road, it's going to be really cool. And uh, the fact that it's going to be in the event center, that's our first match in there. Um, we're hoping to break the attendance record for a volleyball match here at CBU. And we think we can do it. Uh, but I think overall it's a cooler, a cool big venue to showcase what we do. And our fan support is tremendous. The students come out and support us like crazy. And uh, we're just looking forward to move to a little bit bigger place. And, uh, putting on a show there. Coach, you just touched on the fact that you guys will be in the uh, event center. Couldn't think of a better way to break it open, right, for volleyball at least. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be a great match, and, you know, we want to invite all of their fans, their students as well, and, uh, yeah, let's just make it 
one big party. <laughs> so you go for a sellout, right? You want a, you want a huge crowd. Yeah, 5,050 would be great. So tell your friends and family, come on out. It's going to be a, a great night of volleyball. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're both from Riverside, different conferences, but um, it'll be a good game. I think everyone's really pumped for it, so come out and watch. <laughs> yeah, Coach was saying he wants to uh, break the attendance record yes. for a volleyball match. Totally he wants like, a sold-out crowd at the yeah. event center. Are you, are you hoping to see that, too? Oh, yeah, for sure. We want everyone there, so it'll be good. Tessa Oaks, Riverside native, she gets it, right? I mean, she, oh, yeah. she knows that it's going to be this friendly rivalry between CBU and UCR for a long, long time, and they're going to meet together for the first time on the, on the volleyball court at the D1 level. Yeah, did, did I hear him say 5,000 people? Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. smokes, that would be awesome. So you better tell your parents oh, to get parents. tickets now because I know they love to sit front row. They don't sit at the top. They sit right there, right behind yeah, the Yeah, you're darn right because my dad can't see about – but 10 feet, so no, he's got to be in the front row. because the Gorhams are Riverside royalty. <laughs> he's, he's a Hall of Famer. He's, he's got to be in there. Yeah. Let, let's go ahead and punch up that graphic. Here's the details. It's CBU taking on UCR in volleyball. Again, that's October 23rd at 6 p.m. There it is. Jeff, it's going to be inside the event center. So, again, that's why they want to have like 5,000 plus, um, you know, capacity crowd inside the event center. Let's, why not? You know what I mean? It's a community rivalry. It's two really good volleyball teams. CBU's making this push now to get to the next level in Division One. And again, if, if you want to be at that next level, you've got to be able to beat some, some other teams, including maybe one in your own backyard, right? I, I'll tell you what, I'll be there if I can. If I can. You know, I've got all these things going on. Oh, you're very busy. I will try my best to be there. I can't wait to be, just to see something in that event center. Because, you know, we were, we were on the road with UCR this year, but I'm definitely going to hit some UCR our, our Cal Baptist basketball and volleyball games this year. Yeah, that's the again the only volleyball match inside the yeah. event center. Because they play in Van Dyne. Yeah. It's now all volleyball. Yeah, and wrestling. Yes, that's right. Don't forget about wrestling. Hey, and speaking of wrestling, punch up the next graphic because CBU has a huge wrestling match against last year's national runner-up, the Ohio State University. What? So it'll be the Buckeyes and the Lancers. That's coming up a little bit later down the road. November 16th, 7 o'clock, again, inside the CBU Event Center. So if you are a wrestler, a wrestling coach, uh, you just follow wrestling, that's the match. It's, if you're going to go out there, that's the match. Is The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin going to be there? <laughs> I, I don't know if they will be there, but they will have some great wrestlers. I know uh, Coach Zaleski does such a fantastic job with CBU, who is already one of the top programs in Division Two. Now they get a crack at the Buckeyes at, at, in Division One. So. They've wrestled like Stanford. They wrestled Stanford outside. Yeah. Remember that? It was, a, yes. it was an outdoor I do remember match. that. So now they got the Buckeyes. It'll be inside the event center November 16th at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets early. Like the volleyball, it's going to fill up. So you don't want to be left outside. Get your tickets. Get your spot. Will there be, will there be a steel cage? Will there be fireworks? Ladder match. And will, there, will the divas be there? That's <laughs> you, all you, you, want, you want the smoke. You want the music. You want the whole deal, right? I want it all. I want Hulkamania. Back in, <laughs> I want to see Hulk wrestling, CBU, and Ohio State. I want to see it all there in the event. Center. Maybe we'll get like Coach Zaleski to come running out and a singlet and they'll blast some music, you know, fire awesome. going off, the whole deal. Do it. Uh, as we just went inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. Jeff, we're going to wrap things up. Again, a reminder that this week, first place is on the line in a bunch of different high school football leagues. So we're going to do a recap next week and look ahead to what will be week nine already. I mean, we're yeah. coming down the home stretch of the regular season now. It's unbelievable. Yes. Hey, I'm on Riverside TV Friday. Ramona versus La Sierra. That's a, that's a huge game. In fact, every game in the River Valley League is a playoff game at this point. Yes. Every game is every so, game. so important at this point in the River Valley League. And so. then Cullen and Tim Hatch. Yeah, Thursday night, again, is our, our radio game is going to be Arlington against Elsinore live from Ramona High School. So that should be a good one in Sunbelt League play as well. For Johnny Nunez and his team here, is Anthony Dobb back there pushing the buttons and directing? Yes. And he's got a Dodgers hat on today if you're wondering at home, and I know you yeah, are. But he, he wore an angel hat last week. Yeah, and he still had the sticker on it, so I, I just assume Brand he's, new. A, he's Brand a bandwagoner new. and wow, you know, a hat. They beat the Atlanta Braves in the NLDS. They got the Brewers in the yeah. NLDS. Hey, 
No, he bought the hat. He's still got the sticker on it, for gosh sakes. Go Angels. We can't thank Teen Vision and TV16 enough for uh, welcoming us into their studio each and every week. We do appreciate it. For us on uh, Inland Sports, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Of course, if you haven't already, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, streaming live on YouTube and Twitter. We appreciate you guys watching. For Jeff Gorham, I'm Pep Fernandez. We'll see you next week, Tuesday, 3 o'clock, right here for your favorite show, the Inland Sports TV show.